Libations, our show about making truly fine cocktails. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist bartender. And again, as I talked about on the previous episode, we're trying to make drinks that we tone down a bit so they're not cloyingly sweet, so that the palate of somebody who really enjoys cocktails and has for years is not interfered with with excessive sugar, which really masks the goodness of the drink and actually insults the palate of someone who has a bit of sophistication when it comes to cocktails. And the drink that we're going to make in this particular episode is the Bahama Mama, which is a silly name to be sure, but it's actually a very worthy cocktail. And it is a Caribbean cocktail influenced by the Caribbean and created within the Caribbean. And it has a surprise ingredient in it. It is a true tropical drink, similar in many ways to Pacific Rim drinks like um, your Trader Vic's era drinks, such as Mai Tais and Missionaries Downfalls and Scorpions and so forth. Very, very similar to that in that it incorporates rum and in this particular case, one fruit juice. But there's another ingredient in it which is a total surprise and most people find really weird and incongruous when they first hear it and see it. But it makes a remarkable tasting cocktail, a very, very nice one. And some people like to mix this drink and dispense it in a martini glass, but truly it should be served in this particular style of a glass, you know, your chimney glass um, style of barware. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do what we did before, too. We're going to dispense the ingredients first into a cocktail shaker instead of attempting to stir it over ice in the glass, because that kind of ruins it a bit. So that's what we're going to do. It makes it so much easier if you do it this way, too, because the flavors all blend and you don't have to worry about them marrying together properly. So we're going to put a couple of pieces of ice in the cocktail shaker, and then we're going to start pouring the rum. Now, in most Bahama Mamas, in addition to the golden rum, they usually use Bacardi 151 or a very, very high proof rum. And as a general rule, I will not do that. I'm just going to use this particular rum, the golden rum. You could also use a dark rum. Um, a light rum, preferably not, unless you combine it with the golden or dark rum. But this makes things a little more expedient and easy, but produces the same type of a drink with the same type of basic flavor. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to put the golden rum in the shaker. And this particular drink also requires the use of coconut infused rum. And as I often mention on my show, the brand does not matter as long as it's coconut infused rum. And my criteria usually is what's on sale, which was the case as to why I bought this particular bottle. So we're going to put a bit of coconut rum in there. Now, here comes the surprise ingredient. Who would ever think that a coffee liqueur would go into a tropical drink? And at first, I found this very, very strange and very incongruous. But then, when I tasted the drink, I thought, this is fabulous. And I had had Bahama Mamas before, but I wasn't really sure in its entirety what the drink was. But yes, we actually put coffee liqueur. And I would have preferred to use Tia Maria, frankly, made in Jamaica. But this comes from the Gulf, you might say. And it is a coffee liqueur, so I'm going to use it in the Bahama Mama. And you don't want to put a whole lot in. We just want to put some in to kind of uh, create the unique flavor that's there. And then we add pineapple juice to the drink. And we're going to go ahead and add that to our shaker at this point in time. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill our glass with ice. 
and get this vent going here. And this ice has been stored very nicely. It's retaining its coolness and not melting. And that's important too because if your ice is starting to melt, it's going to um, weaken your drink and we don't want that to happen. So I think we have sufficient ice in there. So what we're going to do now is put the top back on the cocktail shaker and we're going to shake it up a bit. And as I already mentioned, you can, if you wish, just do this all in the glass, but it really turns out better this way because you're marrying the flavors when you shake it a bit. So now we're going to go ahead and dispense it into the glass. Our Bahama Mama. Now, there's one more very important ingredient that goes into this drink, and this is lemon juice off a of fresh lemon. And we're going to make sure that we put at least a quarter of, le of a lemon's worth of lemon juice in here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And this is a nice juicy lemon, so it's really getting into this drink like it should. And I'm going to put just a tad more in there. And for a garnish again, you can add a very thin slice of pineapple to kind of jazz it up a bit. Some people also like to put a maraschino cherry in there. I do not. What I like to do is to put just a little, little, little piece of lemon in it, squeeze it again, try to work the oil out, and drop it in the drink. And that serves as a very, very nice garnish. Makes the drink look a little prettier. People will get the idea that there's a hint of lemon in the drink. Now we're going to try it out and see how this tastes and if this is kind of toned down a bit in the sweetness department. Oh, that really tastes good. And it's really interesting how you can taste the hint of the coffee liqueur as long as you don't overdo how much you put in. But it doesn't overwhelm the drink. And people are left wondering exactly what's in here. It has a hint of vanilla flavor to it. Not so much coffee flavor, but it marries beautifully with the pineapple juice, the rum, and the coconut rum. As, as a whole, it produces a lovely tasting drink. And a true Caribbean gulf of Mexico drink, you might say. Bahama Mama. That is really good. And you could put the float of Bacardi 151 on top of it if you, if you wish, but even as is, this is a drink that is quite potent and really packs a wallop in spite of the cutesy name. So again, we can remake drinks that are a little more acclimatized towards people who are beginning drinkers who like gimmicky sounding or overly sweet drinks and make them palatable to someone who's a true cocktail aficionado with a more sophisticated palate. And that's what we did with the Fuzzy Navel. That's what we've done with the Bahama Mama. So keep these things in mind. And keep in mind too, if you wanna make twists of lemon, lime, or orange, the easiest thing to do is to use the tip of a potato peeler to get it off. If you have difficulty with that, what you can also do is you can take a little wedge of it and we can cut through it and get ourselves of course a bit longer than than this bit of peel or zest and we can work the oil out and drop it in if you have trouble doing it with the um, potato peeler. So again my name is Ethel Andrews I'm a mixologist the program is Good Libations and we thank you so much for tuning into it and supporting our efforts